All right, this is a 60-year-old female who uh, actually was at work and fell. CAT scan showed up mass in the left, left upper lobe, biopsy proven to be an adenocarcinoma. It is close to the fissure, and if it crosses the fissure, we may do a lobe in a segment or a lobe in a wedge of that part. We'll see. If you want to go, if you want to feel this and just try to go posteriorly, because these ribs can be really short. These 12th ribs yeah. can be tiny little nothing. So 12. That's 12. Stay still now. It's funny anatomy. 12, 11, 10. She just got very wide, big, long ribs. Here's 10 coming all the way down like this. Here's 10. Here's 9. Gosh. Eight is gigantic. Eight and seven. And so normally we go over the top of the seventh rib, but when that's above the tip of the scapula, and hers is, we'd go over eight. So we'll go over eight today. It's the second patient this week we've had like this. We want the mid axillary line. Knife. Pressure on about eight. And turn the flow up. Starting. There you go. Yeah, put that on eight. All right, well, can you do this? So I really just need to go just yeah. like that. Yeah, right. So right over that rib. You want to feel that rib. Of and we're going right over there, just like that. That's, That's the angle. Okay. So now we use a five millimeter camera. We put this in. We make sure that we're in the chest. Looks good. We insufflate CO2. Marking? Marking? So, oh, let me have a pen. So here's her posterior vertebral body and her spinous processes right here. She's had plating. That's what these other marks are. We just mark out old incision. So we're going to try to find two ribs below the fissure. It looks like it's right about there. We'll do a pair of vertebral block. Come in just a little bit, Laurel. Now come back. I think that's three ribs below the fissure. Laurel would stay like that. Don't, don't turn the camera. That's good marking pen. I think that's where we'll go, Laurel. Take that. And now we just march up the spine. Okay, I'm coming down now, low. Inferior. Yep. Mm -hmm. A little more marking. Knife. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my five millimeter camera in. There's your vertebral spasis right there. It's pretty posteriorly. Five millimeter port. And even though that's very posterior, just five millimeters. Now we take a ruler. Laurel is looking for where the lowest port's going to go, so she's jumping a few steps ahead. That's good. That's what she needs to do. I'm going to mark this along that same rib. I'm going to go 10 centimeters. Right about there. I'm going to go nine centimeters right about here. And I may move those back a little bit. Seeking needle. And then this is going to be our access port. We want a nice triangle. So what we want to do is before we make those, we want to try to maximize this triangle. Now there's the 10th, and that looks beautiful. Now that's a pretty nice triangle today. Knife. I'm going to move it just a little anterior, Laurel. Mm -hmm. And this is important because it's a left upper lobe. This is not going to be an 8 millimeter. It's going to be a 12. So we're going to go 5, 12, 8 millimeter camera, 12, 15. Okay? okay? Carol? Will you go to the robot room and get me a, a 13 millimeter uh, seal, please? 
Okay, put it in, Will. Put your 15 in. Let go. No, you can put it in. That's fine. We'll go over the same hole if you can. Laurel, you got to keep this together. Got to pop it in. Push. Push it in a little more. That's good. All right. Now we take the camera, and the camera goes through here. You got to close this one. That's closed. Open that up first. Close that second. Not sure why you don't put that. Now I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to make these other incisions going over that same rib. So if we hurt an intercostal space, going 10 centimeters away so we don't have conflicts. This today, this often is an 8 centimeter. 8 millimeter port, but today we're going to use the 12 because for the left upper lobe it's very common that I'll want to put my stapler through here so it's already pre-dilated. Okay, knife. This will be my camera. A little close today, but not too bad. We've moved to 8 millimeter cameras now for everything. We've gotten quite used to it. It is a little bit darker, but it's not too bad. Okay. Could you get this loop out? Mm -hmm. She's now going to dilate that with a knife, just a little bit her way. And she's going to turn that into a 12. Mm -hmm, good. I do a little more of a block at each spot. Because this one really hasn't gotten blocked as well as the other ones. Okay, the robot gets stripped of its uh, sterile protective. The only thing you need to worry about here is make sure Robotic Arm 3 is posterior, and I have a great team. They've done that. They have it correct. Robotic Arm 1 and 3 will go to the back. We take the camera. We put the camera as high as it goes. That's step one. We get link two parallel. Let me do this a little better for the video so you have lots of room so everybody can see. You get link two parallel to the spine of the robot, which it is. You make sure the elbow is facing the same way. And then you get your sweet spot right about there. How does that look, Laurel? Good? Yeah. Two comes to one. And then you can hang up and pull back. They all come up now so you can drive it and you don't hurt anybody. Just keep listening to Laurel. Just keep telling her to go. Keep going. Keep going that <clears throat> way. No, no. Keep going the way you're going. And then now turn it. You're probably going to have to come in and then go back. Yeah, yeah, really turn that a little more than we needed Maybe to. Not. Keep going. So the idea is to establish a 15 okay. degree angle. Okay. And actually, that's pretty good. Actually, that's actually that's good. good. Keep going. Come in straight in about yeah. a few inches. Good. So it's not a perfect 15 degree angle, but it, but it's pretty close. All right. Let's do this one. Maybe you wanna. You can move your hand. I'm gonna get the angle just right for you. Now pop it in. Put your hand on the back. Use the back thing. Got it. That's the way to do it. All right. The tricks to that is there's a little button on the bottom, the very back. Use that button on the very bottom to dock. What I do is I establish the angle and then they use it and pop and you see how quickly they do it. Yeah.
I have to control the camera. Put in three first. Okay, never mind. You got one in. Pull it back to the line. It's in too far. Good stop. So now what you want to do is place your trocars. cars. They're going to move that back a little bit. So that trocar car is to the line. So one's going to come back a little. And then you're going to put a uh, spatula. Pull it back. Spatula in one. Thank you. Not too much with three, guys. Three goes in just a little bit further than that. Spatula in one. That's good. Now through uh, three, put in a double, the uh, long grasper. Excuse me. That's good. Thank you. I got it. You can see there's an adhesion there. We'll see if we can get it down. Okay, now through two, just put in a, uh, uh, I might need a 30 up. That's great, thank you. So you see when you have adhesions up high, all you'll have to use a 30 up sometime. So the thoracic grasper will grasp that long. And we'll go ahead and we'll take, come in here with two. And we'll take this adhesion down. So there is the obvious tumor. It's not crossing the fissure, so it's not a T2B as we were wor worried about, as my letter said preoperatively. The lung is down very, very nice today, beautiful. And so we're going to go right to the fissures and the advantage, I mean, right to the lymph nodes, and the advantage to that is it mobilizes and opens everything up for you. We're not going to go get some of the N2 nodes. Laurel, come on in, or Anna, come on in and suck a little here. And again, what I love about toggling, look, as one comes up, I take number three and toggle and just grab the lung and just pull it back just like you would do with open surgery. And you're working in here. So what I like to do in my left upper lobes, because the left, the, the PA is always identifiable in the back, is to work back here. And a lot of people would want to use a bipolar here, and that's fine. You could. That's a number 10. Take that out, 10L, go. Now we're going to go ahead and get all these N2 nodes out of here. We're not going to put suckers in the chest unless they tell me, so it's all about communication. So when a sucker comes in the chest, I'm going to know it's coming in. And they're going to say sucker coming in, that's how you communicate on these. Nice example here of a number five coming up.
You got a beautiful uh, visibility. You get just an outstanding lymph node dissection robotically. You can see that whole node can come right out. And if you hug the node, of course, you stay out of trouble. The recurrent laryngeal is not an issue. Phrenic nerve can come up on you pretty quickly on this. You want to be a little bit careful there, see? Maybe just hug that node just a little bit better. Pushing the node away from trouble, out of trouble. Always clutching. Really trying to keep the field very, very clean and dry. That's a five. Mm -hmm. Final. Come on, grab it, please. Good. Actually, can work right in the fissure today. This is a nice example of it. We haven't been able to do this lately, but we got a little bit of a break. Fissure's right there. And you'll get that note in your posterior segmental artery you'll be able to take. And so I take the posterior segmental artery first on the left upper lobes, and I'll show you why. And that's how we do it robotically. Of course, Vachu wouldn't do that. Vachu would take uh, the vein first and work around that way, and you'll see why we do it differently robotically here in a few minutes. So now I'm coming over. This is a 30 down camera. Yeah, this is a 30. Oh, gosh. Yeah, no, I forgot we didn't change it back. Not yet. No, we're good. The fact I can do this with a 30 up is a testament to this robot. Normally you can't see over this. Put a zero in. Let's try it with a zero. Turn one to a bipolar. So now we have a new instrument in the chest. We have two new instruments, and it's called a thoracic grasper. And now we're using this instrument, which is called a curved bipolar dissector. That's the new instrument you're seeing right now. And you see, it's really very, very friendly. Look how I can take this uh, number six lymph node right out of here. Staying out of trouble with nice view of what's happening. I thought we were free, but apparently we're not. Two out. That's a number six. So there's a couple ways to take the lymph nodes out. We get this question a lot. You could take it out of the port this way and just take the instrument out. But it's quicker if you actually go this the way we're doing it. If you have a very good assistant, we have Anna with us today and Laurel, and they're both really good. And for them, it's much quicker to come this way. In fact, they're going to put a sucker in there because they see what's happening. I'm now going to go, oh, let's get rid of that. That'll hurt your whole camera. It was a six for final. Now I'm going to take robotic arm three, the lung grasper, and I'm going to grasp this lung, excuse me. Is the lingula stuck maybe to something? Yep, the lingula is a little stuck. No, it's not. It's not stuck at all. Okay. So we're now going to just swing this back like this just to expose the vein a little bit. Laurel and Anna now are going to grab that lingula and they're going to pull the lingula back. Lingula, please, guys. 
Yeah, it's better. Big difference. Grab the lingula. Please grab the lingula like an athlete right there. Stop. Pull this vector. Pull. More. More pull, please. So what we want to do now is we want to make sure that there are two veins. Because you never do a left lower lobe or a left upper lobe or really any lobe until you're assured there's veins, but especially on the left side. And, and the CAT scan is one way to do it, but we double check in the OR. And that's our space in between the two veins. Now you're going to let go, you're going to grab the lower lobe now. And you're going to grab the lower lobe and you're going to do the same thing with the lower lobe right here. Mm -hmm. You're going to pull at that vector. That's nice. Let me have a rolled up ray tech now, please. Um, you can probably let go. I'm just going to get this vein just a little bit ready to go here. Let go and give me a rolled up ray tech. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So what you really want to do now is just sweep the vein up. can really see it there and you're seeing the edge of it but just not seeing it as well as I'd like to just yet but we will there's the edge of it there so there's the edge of your vein right there so that's that edge now I want to get on this edge of it here You want to find the lingular branch, which should be right in here. You want to find where that edge is on the bronchus, which is right there. I'll zoom in just so the picture looks a little better. But that's going to be your upper low vein. You'll get around that. And before you take that, we're going to do some other work in the back. So that's pretty good. Now what I like to do to be efficient is come back over the top. So I'm going to take three, and I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to dig out some of that anterior apical trunk actually just so when I get around the vein there's no question as to where the artery is and it's really really carefully delineated the anatomy and again the third arm is doing all that exposure for me no one at the bedside, I've got great bedside assistance but they don't need to do this part that's the advantage of using all four arms I think you can see there, anterior trunk right here. Very well can see it. Just going to get on this just a little bit more here. And the third arm should set it up so it's just perfect for you. You really want to get all this dug out here now. Really exposing all of that space. Well, you want this space here between the vein and the artery opened up because that's where your... Uh, Cartier is going to come through when you, when you try to get around that vein. You just got to really be careful. There's always some gurry there, I find, and you really got to dissect that out well. You just want to hug the node. Whole AP window gets completely dissected out. Big advantage of the robot is the nodal dissection. Now 
That's a number, uh, I'd say a six, take it. It's not a five, it's a six. Take that. You got it? Thanks. So now we got the artery pretty much cleared off here, I think, right? That's the artery vein junction, which you really like to clear that off. See the edge of the artery pretty well. You come around back here and open this up. So you get on that stuff just a little bit better, yep. Now you can change the vector of arm three just a little. Just push it a little more from that way, just a little more maybe this way. So you're coming around. Again, robotic arm three doing all the exposure. Now you're staying away from the uh, vagal nerve. Hugging the artery. We'll go get some number sevens now and then some eights and nines. And then go right ahead and do the procedure. Having taken the nodes, lifting everything out. And you can even see there's a 4L right in there if you want to go get that. Look at that. I thought I saw 4L, maybe not. So now we're going to change the vector a little more. Three goes up. One goes up, excuse me. Three is now going to start pushing that left upper lobe this way a little bit. Really exposing the posterior segmental artery and the fissure. And so whether the fissure is complete or incomplete, this technique, it doesn't matter, as you can see, because you're working totally independently of the fissure. You're working right on the PA. Still this little bit of gurry back here. We want to get it now so we come on that artery. There's no question. And if you like blunt dissection or sucker dissection, sucker's coming, but you can use this. And you can just sweep up the artery just like that. Okay, now I think we can actually lift up and work in the fissure today just because the fissure is, is going to be easy, unlike the last several operations we've had. So what we do that is you always want your assistant to work below you. There's tumor, so I don't want to really grab the tumor. So I'll grab like, well, that's going to get my way. I'm going to grab that like that. And then I'm going to have Anna come in here and grow up, grab this lower lobe. You're going to grab the lower lobe and you're going to pull it. When you grab it, I'll show you the vector. Just grab, stop that way right now. That's good. And we'll just work in here, make sure we're not missing any N1 nodes. Follow this right down to where we were just working. So you can just see right where the artery is, see? That's the advantage of working on the artery early. People want to call this a fissureless technique. Well, you've got to work in the fissure a little. So the right upper lobe is really a completely fissureless technique. This isn't, but this is pretty close. This is how you approach it irrespective of the fissure. And then I'll pull down this way a little. No, it's, that's it, yeah, good. Keep going, good, a little more, good. Pull that way, good. That's it. That's it. Now stay still. Good. And now we're going to free this up off the back and we're going to have the posterior segmental aspect of this whole PA out.
So that branch would be ready to go if we wanted to go get it, but we don't, not yet, but we're getting there. That PA branch is going to be close. There's the bronchus underneath it. Nice fisher today, boy. We're very lucky. Thank you. That's the way to tell me. So I always make a point that when you're going to do this left upper lobe, this lymph node down here is an important part of it. Even though it's in the lower lobe, I get it out and I like to identify the PA underneath it because sometimes there's a little branch there. But usually you get this out. This opens up your ability to take the fissure if, you're, if the fissure is uh, incomplete. Allows you to dissect all this out. You can get a stapler back here and do the posterior fissure early in the operation, which is what you do robotically, but what I don't do with vats or open. That's probably a number 11, huh? Let go, Anna. Let go now, you can let go of the lung. The lung's gonna go the other vector now. An 11. Good. Now you take your lower lobe superior segment and you lie posteriorly. And now you can come in here with a stapler or today we'll just use this. Looks pretty good. I think I need a little better counter-traction with that. Anna, you want to grab the lower lobe and just give me a little counter-traction here? This time you're going to grab it and go this way. Grab this way. That's it. Not too much. Just a little more. Just so you see tension there, yeah. You know, you can staple this, you can over it doesn't matter. Usually like to work right on top of the PA, so that's probably the best place to work is right here. There's some lymph nodes there that we definitely want to get. We keep doing this till we really see the lingula. I haven't seen yet. That posterior segmental artery is something we're going to take pretty early in this case. We could even take it now if we wanted. But I think this little bit of fish is going to get in our way. So I'm going to go through it with cautery today instead of a stapler because it's relatively complete. Using our new instruments. And there comes lingula. You can see the lingula coming up right there. So let's see if we can just get this lingular lymph node off. Right there. We definitely want that coming that way and this coming this way. So there's often two branches there. Let's see. See if we can get right on it and dissect it off. Yep, I think that whole thing is going to be lower, low, basal. So I think we're in good shape. I think that's all going to be lingular up there. Right there is going to be the lingular artery right there. I think you can see. So I think we're in pretty good shape. We can probably take that fissure maybe with a stapler at the end. Or before we do the vein is probably what we'll do. So that looks good. So we got that ready to go. So let's go get some of our N2 nodes now. Let go, Anna. Now we're going to work down here like this, turning this over like this. We're going to come in. We get the horizon straight on our inch on our camera, and we're going to work back here and get some sevens and eights. What you want to do now is find your vagus right there, and I like to push the vagus back, so I usually use that as my mark. 
Bronchus obviously is going to be in here. You want to free all this up if you can. Sweeping. Taking this whole thing down, and we'll take the ligament down, and we'll get our eights and nines here in a minute. There's your inferior pulmonary vein. Right there. It's hoping to see a whole bunch of sevens, because I think the biggest disadvantage of the VATs on the left side is that number seven, and boy, it's very easy with robotics to get the seven usually. And you want to hold that back? Just come in here and hold the lung back like that for me. You don't need the ray tech, just hold it back. Mm -hmm. Good. So there's your inferior pulmonary vein. So if you're doing a lower lobe, that would be right there for the taking. It's nice to see that though, so you know you've got two. I don't see a lot of posterior mediastinal lymph nodes today. How are we now, Katharina, better? So we'll take the inferior pulmonary ligament down, which is right here. And your camera is maximized right now, but I can see. And I still like to take the whole ligament down. I do it open. I like to do it robotically. I like to do the same thing robotically I do open. I think that's what makes the operation so appealing. Do the same lymph node I do open. That certainly isn't true of my, my VATS lobes, at least. The lymph node dissection is terrible for us. So not a lot of nodes here. Usually there's a big number nine that pops its head up. I don't see it. There's one coming up there we'll go get. That's probably a small nine. There's the inferior pulmonary vein. So there's a nine right there. Number nine, final. So a very nice lymph node dissection, as you can see. That's out, take it. Now we'll fix this again a little bit. Maybe I'll just hold this up a little so we don't go up against the heart. Just let me know, Katarina. Uh, in a minute, 
Let me just go get some of these eights out of here, which I don't see a hell of a lot. There's your vein. Don't see a lot of eights, huh? But I saw one there. Why don't you just suck in there, Anna? There, there's a little eight right there. Yep. Suck. So normally there's a whole bunch of lymph nodes in there. These are pretty small today, but that's good. Eight. Now we'll go get the seven. Boy, that's not impressive. Come on. No, I mean the node, not you. Now let's fix this. Let's try to get the seven. Usually we get the sevens. We have both the lower and the upper lobe. Okay. Yep. Compressing. Stuck in there, Anna, now. Unbelievable. Usually they're just chock full of lymph nodes right down in here, huh? If any more, I'm going to be in the guy's other chest. But it's a tribute to what you can do robotically. I mean, look at the view. Or wait, well, that's this atrium <laughs> you're seeing. There's your seven way down there, which would be almost impossible to get, I think, with vats. And we should be able to get it robotically. See, there it is there. And this is a lower one than usual. You can still get it. Suck in there, please. Hmm. That's the top of it. There's more down there. Can you put your sucker in here and... Just push that bronchus back. I'll get the ray tech out. Just push up against the bronchus right there. That's bronchus. That's vein. Just push there. Yep, push. You see the lymph node down there? Suck in there now. Suck. That's seven. Come out. That's good. Just suck in there as I'm coming in there. Tough today. Now, you, there's some tricks you can, actually we're getting it now, you can bring up some big deep breaths in the other lung, careful, there's a big artery that goes in there, suck in there, Anna, so I see it, suck up here, I mean, suck, that's it, back and forth, good, so now we're getting this entire number seven lymph node out of here, and it's hard to do today, this is very low, okay, and this I think is one of the biggest advantages of the robot. But I think a good VAT surgeon would argue he would do a good mead or a good ebus and push this back now. Switch, come behind me. Push that back. Okay, seven. We'll put a little surge of cell in there because that was really deep. So that's a nice big number seven. It looks normal though. That's all the way down to the right main stem. Third of a piece of surgery and we'll do a hostage exchange. 
So that's your lymph node dissection, five, six, seven, eights, and nines. Posterior fissure is complete. Let's go get the posterior segmental artery. And that takes about usually 40 minutes, and so we're about nine minutes behind, but that's fine. Okay, all right, now let's go back. Hostage exchange. Mm -hmm. I want it up there. Yep, take it. Good. So now what we want to do is sweep this back down. Get our hands and arms comfortable. Superior segment is ready to go out of our way. Posterior segment's here. There's where tumor is. But we're not doing a segment. You see how easy it would be to do a segment here if we had to. And now we're going to go get this posterior segmental artery first. And the reason is because the stapler comes up uh, from anterior. So what I like to do is really dissect this node out. Vessel loop vascular stapler ready. And we'll just dissect this guy along. Make sure we got all that lymph node off. It looks very nice today. Not stuck, doesn't look too bad. Probably a little artery behind you, there it is. So what we'll do is we'll come like this with a cardiac, and we'll put a vessel loop in here. And, and there's a couple of tricks. You should have a vessel loop in the chest. You should have a Raytec in the chest when you get around there, just so you get around that so that's nice and safe. Shouldn't be any tension on that. And maybe I can reposition that third arm so maybe it'll be more like this for Laurel or Anna. Okay, let me have a vessel loop, please. So now a vessel loop comes in. We grab it with this guy. We want to put this here. This can go back like this. This can come around like this. Grabs it. Before we take it, we will dilate it a little bit. I'll be safer. Grab it. Now, this new instrument, unlike a bipolar, does hold uh, a vessel loop which is nice because the bipolars do not. Is that going to be too close to the action, Anna? It might be. Yeah, I don't like that. Let me come out here. Just going to give you some room. That's probably good. And the length of those are important, actually. We make them about 8 to 9 centimeters. But I think she'll be able to put a stapler in there now and come get that. And if there's a lot of tension, I'm going to look what I'm going to do with 3. I'm going to toggle and bring 3 down just a little. Not quite that much, but down just a little to like that. All right, Anna. Turn it up one. Maybe up one more. Good. Slide it in there. Slide it in there. Look, there's PA underneath. You just go under there and then above the aorta. Mm hmm Slide it in. You're good. Slide. Good. Keep going. Slide. Push. You're good. Good. Stop right there. Stop right there. Now, if you're afraid of tension, you can take three off a little. But I'm just going to take three and pull it back. Close. So anyhow, you close. Now you fire gently without moving it, good. Pull it back, gently. All right, so anyhow, you see how careful you have to be.
This actually, I think, is the antiapical trunk that we almost never take next. We almost always uh, take the lingula next and then the vein. But there's the bronchus. And so maybe I can snag that bronchus and just hold it. But there's that antiapical trunk right there, which sometimes you can get from the front. Sometimes you really, you really got to take the bronchus first to get it. So I think we'll just be careful right there right now. I think we're pretty good there. Let's go now to get this, our lingular branch. Then we'll get the vein, and we'll figure out what to do with that. So I want to open this up a little bit so Anna has room to get her stapler in there and also I want to get that N1 node out. Yeah, maybe a little lymph node there. See that? Uh, I think it's benign. I don't think it's anything. We're just going to carefully put this in here. I'm going to follow the angle carefully and just bring it through here. And I don't like that turn. Hmm. Now, Anna, if this fissure's in your way, we can take it down. But I'd rather have you sneak a stapler in here and go get this out of the way, because that'll take, help me get the fissure better. Stapler in. You're going to go up two. One, two. Another one, good. Slide that in there, watching the PA. And I think you got room. Mm hmm Go ahead. Slide it in. It's nice, Anna. Don't get the lung. Now you got to come over the lung. Now go in. Right into the artery. There's a nice big space there. You're hitting the lung. You're hitting the lung with the anvil is what I'm, this, the other part of the staple is what's hitting the lung. Slide it in. That's good. Slide it in. Now you're going to have to roll gently. Hmm. Hang on. Hang on. You almost got it. You got to go on top of that thing. Now push in now. Push in. That's good. Right there, stop. Can you roll it just a little? Could just, cl uh, just close. I think you're off the main PA. Close. Yeah, you're good. That's great. Fire.
All right, now we can complete the fissure. There's your lingula. Probably come in this way. Let's see which hand's going to be best. Do I want to come in like this? Maybe. Uh, yeah, I'll put three down like that. That'll give me this guy and this guy. Come in here with your stapler and take this as a free shot right now, Lowell. Slide in there. A little more. That's good close. Yep. And now fire. So here's the fissure. And you can do that once you take the lingular artery fire. Now you can pull it back using your third arm and you can complete this fissure like this. So you should be able to if I'm any good. Lift this like this. Make your big curved forceps here because you've identified the lingula and go right at that and just go above the bronchus which I saw a minute ago is right there, see? And then go between the veins which Ann is going to grab the lower lobe now and pull it back. Hang on, this has to be over here. Grab this lower lobe, which is good right there, now pull it posteriorly. More. And so here's the space I want to be right here, which I should I guess I haven't dilated it enough. I thought I did, but apparently I haven't. It's your lower, it's your upper. There's lower low vein, there's upper low vein. So here's space right there. Can't miss that. And you should be able just to be able to drive something right through there. Right through there. But let's just open the space up just a little bit better. Now this should be able to come right through there. I'm just clearing off this N1 node off this bronchus. See it here? I don't know if you guys see that or not. But you don't want to nail the lingular vein. Suck in there, please, Anna. Well, I guess you can't. I think there's just that big node which always bleeds. There's your vein right there. And if I get that lymph node out, that'll open up this whole space. There's that number 11. And then you're less likely to hurt any veins or anything pulling this through. But usually you can really see the veins really well here, and it's not a problem. That's a number 11, Anna. I guess you're going to have to let go and grab it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to complete the fissure again. So we're going to grab this, and we're going to pull it back up. Just leave it up, actually up in the air. You're going to grab that lower lobe here. 
Good job. And I'm going to start here, and then when I say turn, then you're going to go back this way, okay? Should be a nice big space there. If I've done it right, it should be very simple. Nope. Okay, now Anna, move it. Move it in the back. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, well, that's fine. Stay there. Now, where's that vessel loop? I thought I did, there it is up there. I thought I did such a nice job having my vessel loop ready. And this happens, so you really should double check it. Okay, now what this is just going to allow me to do is allow her to bring a staple in here and complete this fissure. So you can do this many different ways, but this is the way we usually do it. Before we take the vein now. What you really want to do now is just get this vein off this bronchus here. Okay, come here and grab this lower lobe now and pull it back like this for me, please, just like we do when we take the vein. Just grab the staple line. A little bigger bite. Yeah, good. And now pull that. No, no, this way. Yeah, down. Good, that's it. It's a friendly vein today. Usually these veins are a little more difficult than this and a little bit bigger and a little more difficult to see. Today you can really see it well, and so I... This is a little bit easier than the la than most left upper lobes veins, I think. You really want to see the very apex of that left upper low vein. A little bit more like that, huh? How's that? Is that better? I think so. Okay, one out. Yeah, you gotta let go of the lung, and you're going to dedock one, and you're gonna put a vascular stapler through there. Deflect up two. Hook that, and then once you hook it, then you start to lift up. Okay, go ahead. Bring it in. Start in the hole. You ready now? Okay, come on in. Slide it in there. Good, Anna. That's great. 
put that anvil and push up against the bronchus as you go in. No, you gotta go in the hole first. No. Put it in the hole. Good. Now slide it in. Lift up off the heart. Now slide your tips in. Slide it in there. You're too low. You're gonna come up a little higher. Anna, you're too low. Stop. Come back a little, Anna. Come back a little bit more. Now start to wiggle it in. You got a little gurry. Wait, if I let go, okay, I think you got it. Just wait, just wait, just wait. See? Just wait. Now push it in. You got to come off the medius and push in. That's good. That's very nice, Anna. Close. Let three take a little tension off. That's good. Okay, fire. So that's the superior pulmonary vein. And now usually we've been taking the bronchus before the widowmaker. Ignore that stapler that just went in our face, but that's the only way to dismount it, right? Pull it back to the line. A little more. That's good. Now put it in there. It's called curved bipolar. Yeah, she did a nice job there, Laurel. So we got the antiapical trunk, and maybe we can take the trunk today before the bronchus. Laurel, what do you think? You can actually see the trunk, and maybe we can take the truncus before we take the bronchus. Now we free the bronchus up. We make sure there's a, there's a big artery in here, and this can bleed a little bit, but we get all these nodes off. Usually your assistant now is holding the PA out of the way. And now what we do is we put a uh, vessel loop around that. Let's go get our vessel loop. So now we're going to try to get this without nailing the artery. Suck in there. Suck. Good. Now suck on the other side of this bronchus. Suck in there. Okay, out. If there's any question, you do this. I don't have any question that that should be free, but we'll double check. Yeah, there's a little stuff there. See it? want this part to be perfectly dry and boring. There shouldn't be anything there. Nothing.
Suck there, please. Yep. A little bit of stuff left. See this stuff here? That's holding us up. Careful, please. That's the stuff that's getting in the way. See that? So you can look over the lung if you want. You can take this from the back if you want. Thank you. And all this tissue all off here. That'll make that a little easier. Okay. And the number three arm should be doing all this work here and holding that back like that for us. Could you suck in here? Shouldn't be any blood at all in there. Suck, suck all that out. Suck in there, please, right where I'm working, right on the bronchus. Come on. Suck. That's bronchus. Suck. Yep, just suck in there. Good. And all this should be freed here. You can't get around this bronchus until all this is freed up. Mm -hmm. Suck in there. So one option is to go take this antiapical trunk now, just because we're just so dissecting it so much out. But the bronchus should be very, very free now, as you can see. You can get around that bronchus, right? All right. So let's take it and look the other way now. That's pretty well cleaned up. Uh, vessel loop I'll be able to get, I think. Where did I leave that? That guy's still good, okay. I think if we hold this back like this, what do we want to do? We want to do the bronchus or we want to do the... Uh... Yeah, new sponge, please. Uh-huh. Take this. Good. The only reason I like to take the Broncos next is it's such a straight shot to take that trunk last. And it's such a nice teaching point. Suck in there. Suck in there. There should be all the room in the world now. And it's a little bit more pointy. Now normally what we do is you can you suck in there. I just think we're just missing a little bit of junk in here. There we go. That's what it's supposed to look like. Suck here. I just yeah, right between the artery and the bronchus, because that's where your stapler is gonna go. See that? Good. You're gonna put the bronchial stapler now from one. See? And I'll move three to make it easier for you. So one comes out. 
That was a pretty quick pull. Nothing in your airway. And now the bronchial stapler comes in this way, avoiding the artery. Not a great angle again today. Why is that? Normally that comes right in. Okay, Laura, you got to go two down now. That's it. Much better. You got to watch the artery. See the artery there? I don't like your angle. Okay, go on in. As long as you don't bump in, just tell me and take your choke car out maybe. Nothing in the airway? Thank you. All right, take it in that way and just be careful of the uh, uh, You see, you got to get your tip. You can't bring her down one or two. But wouldn't it be nice to have a robotic stapler? That's good. Stop. Just wait. I'm going to move the heart. Just wait. Just, every, just stay the way you are. You're fine. Hang on, Laurel. Go ahead a little more. Laura, I, I just don't like these angles today at all. Okay, just wait the way you are. Going to bring the lung over the stapler instead of the stapler to the lung. I think that's what we have to do today. Go ahead, close. Fire. Yeah, it is a little high, yeah. Yeah, that stump's a little high. Be careful coming off, you don't spring off. There's still an artery there. I think that's good, and it's not too tight. Yep, slide it in. You got room, slide it in. You got to come above the aortic arch. That's it. Hang on. Slide your tips higher up and now slide it in. Keep going, you're good. Just stay there. That'll be fine. Don't pull. Close. Good. Come back. Mm -hmm. Good. Careful dismount. Thank you. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go through how we remove this. First, the first thing we do is we empty everything out of the chest. So let's do that, Anna. We take the Raytec out. Let's do a little dipping sauce here, a little dipping sauce action. Raytec out. Vessel loop out.
bag is going to come in through the access port. This is important. The bag comes in anteriorly because that works with gravity for us. And apically, because that's where the most room is. And number three holds a specimen above it, as you can see. And you should change one to really a cotier, but keep going. We're showing this off. Never mind. Pull back your blue, your purple just a little. Advance. Push in, push in, push in. Good. Stay like that. There's your hole. So now I take three and I put it in here. I drop it in like this. Three comes out of the way. Go ahead, start closing now. That's good, start to close. You make sure your specimen's in the bag. Now you just pull it out, you know. Why don't you go ahead now, we're going to irrigate after the bag gets removed. We're going to irrigate through here. Take two out, please, and change one to a cotier. So besides the bronchus, it was all right, Laurel. Pulse irrigation now. Keep going, keep irrigating. That's good, stop. This is all irrigation, suck it out now, Anna. So we irrigate with warm water in case there's any potential tumor cells that have been spilled. No data for that, but that's what we do. Come up here, please, with your sucker. Gent now come in here carefully and just suck in there gently. Not that gentle, just suck. Good. Suck in there. Good. All right, good. Suck apically, anteriorly. Yep. Suck. And now we put a chest tube through there, and we use a 20 French tube, and the reason we do that is it fits through the trocar. And usually I come here and I play catcher. And I actually see the chest tube come through. Suck up there. Suck down here. Get all this blood out of here. Suck. I'll do it at the end. Okay, D doc. So when we make our extension, it's always posteriorly. And this is a small tumor, and actually it looked like a pretty small left upper lobe. Okay, that's good. And now with this bag, as opposed to the cook, you don't have to work inside of it because of its shape. And then you can take it out once you get by there and slow down so you don't hit your assistance in the head. You can see here's tumor puckering the pleura. And I don't think a segment's a good operation for, for a tumor that puck, puckers the pleura, even if it's less than a centimeter. I think a T2 visceral pleural invasion is probably better served with lobectomy, although, of course, there's no definitive data for that. That's opinion. We're now going to send off a bronchial margin. And we'll send off the specimen. So if, you want to, if you're worried about uh, pleural invasion, you don't want to cut it there and hurt the pathologist. You want to go through here. and get it out this way, you get a dab in there, it's fine. And get a nice big chunk of this for analysis. Mm -hmm. Then we close. 